I'm a little underdressed today because being in the UK, we're smack in the middle of a goddamn heat wave. As world events continue to push rally in the defense industry, I recently carried out a full deep dive. So if you want the full breakdown, check out the link below for a video packed full of information. However, at over 25 minutes long, it might be a bit too intense for some viewers. So this is one of three videos I'll be uploading to cover my top three companies. And in this one, I'll be covering BAE systems. Here we go. The defence industry can be quite incestuous, with various military products being collaborations between separate companies, so I'm going to break down the industry by focusing on the areas they are operating in. If you've been watching any coverage on the war, then you would have noticed how Russia's strategy was initially based on a practical invasion with their tank fleet, with an expectation that they could win within a matter of weeks. Putin failed to account for mass corruption in military leadership and unmotivated and poorly trained military personnel, outdated, poorly designed military equipment and supplies, and pitted this against a country highly motivated to fight back and the Western world more than willing to support them through military supplies, with over $3.4 billion worth of weapons sent by the USA so far. And the threat imposed by a determined Cold War tyrant, that is Putin, has caused many countries to realise how far behind they have fallen with their military forces and they need to seriously boost their defence spending. With global military spending reaching a record $2 trillion in 2021, 20% of this figure comes from Europe, where countries have been bolstering their defences in response to the Russian annexing of Crimea. 14% was spent by China with their escalating military presence across Asia, and in 2020, Australia responded to what they called a poorer, more dangerous world and rise of China by pledging $270 billion to be spent over a 10-year period, and they have been particularly focused on their long-range missile defense systems. The USA remains the biggest contributor, with $801 million spent on offense in 2021, and in March alone, the country attributed a $13.6 billion aid package for Ukraine. So with budgets on the rise, I've done the research, I've gone over the fundamentals of the top defense companies. To understand this, here's a breakdown of how these companies are playing a role in current world events. BAE Systems are a UK-based global manufacturer and supplier in air, maritime, land and cyber defences, and a main advanced weapons provider for Allied navies, particularly the US, offering self-defence, gunnery and long-range launching systems. Their most advanced products include microwave systems, and would you believe it, an electric railgun, which is incredibly lethal with multiple layer penetration. <laughs> In April, the US donated 108 of BAE's M777 howitzers, mobile artillery units capable of firing GPS-guided munitions for up to 40 kilometers. Ukraine started using their new long-range systems in July, and these have had a devastating effect on Russia's forces, killing multiple commanders. Fuck those guys. BAE maintains and supplies Tornado Jet aircraft to the UK's Air Force and provides operational capability to the country's air and naval forces. That's on top of their involvement in the design, manufacture and support of key military aircraft from around the world, with their air division making up 39% of sales. Against the US Department of Defense and the UK's Ministry of Defense, Saudi Arabia are BAE's third largest customer, representing 12% of sales. They secured massive multi-year contracts between the UK and the Saudi governments as a subcontractor, with their revenues partly guaranteed by the involvement of the British state. The country accounts for 29% of BAE's air division, the largest single destination for its military aircraft. BAE are also one of Australia's most significant military providers, and they have been supporting Australia since 1953, and since then they have grown into the sixth largest defence supplier in the world, and they are a partner in some significant defence projects, including Lockheed Martin's F-35 fighter aircraft series, which is built in partnership with BAE and Northrop Grumman both of whom have secured contracts to support Australia's Joint Strike Fighter Maintenance Hub in Williamtown, Australia, where they will provide maintenance, repair, overhaul and upgrades across the Asia-Pacific for military aircraft, with the F-35 design and production work alone being valued at around 1.3 billion Australian dollars. Since June 2018, BAE secured the $35 billion C-5000 Future Frigate Program, in which their Type 26 Global Combat Ship design will be used to construct nine anti-submarine hunter-class frigates for the Royal Navy. 
BAE selected Lockheed Martin and Saab Australia as combat system partners in the construction, with Lockheed introducing their Aegis Combat Management System that provides simultaneous land, sea and underwater defences with full 360 degree 3D tracking capacity. BAE's involvement in Australia represents just 4% of their overall sales and they have more significant business across the USA, UK and Saudi Arabia, representing 9, 4 and 2.5 billion pounds respectively. The company's current outlook includes a £44 billion backlog with good order intake expected for 2022 from their continued operations. And based on 2021 performance, the company rates themselves as the seventh highest defence contractor in the world. So as usual, this is where I'm going to try and go over all the financials to explain which companies are offering the best opportunities for investors. Having gone over a massive amount of data, I'll be breaking this down by focusing on the few companies I think offer the best value. With the choices left, I don't like to buy companies trading over 15 times earnings, especially with companies with a PEG ratio over 1. But all these companies are seeing momentum brought on by recent world events, so I'm going to explain why BAE Systems trades at fundamentals that represent the great value and growth prospects of the company, not market sentiment. BAE stands out as the cheapest, and it's a company I've been buying for a few years ever since tensions with China were heating up. And most recently, the stock has become more volatile with the situation in Ukraine, as investors seem to be cashing out on perceived highs, only for the stock to bounce back. The stock is up over 46% year to date, and over 51% trade in 12 months, which is a far jump from trading sideways for the past 5 years. This record stock price was followed by the company announcing a pay rise of 6.75% for nearly 30,000 of their staff, with a second pay rise of 6% to follow next year. It's a great example of a company responding to the needs of their employees compared to the many companies right now who are seeing strike actions in comparison. The company's revenue to net income is growing at a steady pace, but of particular note is the earnings per share, which has been growing rapidly since Australian expansions, which can explain the company's increase in assets and shareholder equity which have been on a rapid incline. Since things heated up in Ukraine, I've also been using a leverage ETF to increase my position and profits by a margin of three, which I covered in my previous video about leverage. And this has doubled my original profits over the course of the last few months. However, this is not a strategy for everyone, and I think the stock has recently rallied to a peak. I have concerns about BAE's increase in long-term debt, and I'm particularly not happy that with all this growth, the dividend has been moving at a very slow rate. Although at £8.24 per share, it still sits at a market lead in 3.10% yield, which is great for investors who love a dividend. Warfare is a complicated and incestuous industry, and it's taken a lot of time to put all this information together. Now, there are other companies I haven't covered in detail, Raytheon, L3 Harris, etc., that have their own roles in the industry, but I focus on the companies that show the patterns of growth that I look for in investment. I've identified three companies that are showing strong positions in the market, good organic growth in their earnings, and stock prices based on their productions and contracts, not market sentiment. Comparing these three to the S&P 500, they are not immune from market crash but as the defense industries recover over a general bull run, they have had a much faster recovery than the competition, and BAE has been catching up quite nicely. If you want a full breakdown of all three, then check out my full deep dive of the industry in the link below. If I had to summarize these three companies, I would say that BAE is the value play of the three, trading at the lowest fundamentals. As part of routine rotations in my portfolio, I have moved out of my BAE positions as I felt the stock has climbed a little too far too soon, and I may consider taking on BAE again if it comes back down, the dividend improves, or the others become too expensive to continue investing in. For now, it's back on my watch list, and I'm building my positions with the other two a bite at a time to balance out the current volatility in the market. Overall, I think these companies will stand the test of time, responding to the growing world hostilities and returning profits to shareholders over the long term. And that's pretty good for investing. So that's my take. And if you like what you see and you want to see more, please smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. And if you have any thoughts, please comment below, let me know, and I will take some time to respond. Until next time.